What is going on, all my sci-fi cosmic horror fans out there? It's your boy, Fat Samurai Guy, back again with another episode of our brand new series, Our Favorite Motherfucking Movies. That's right. And back, back in the heezy, back in the dojo, we have actor, filmmaker, stuntman, martial artist, all that good shit, Alex Chung. Welcome back, my friend. Thanks for having me back. I'm super excited to talk about this movie. Yeah, man. Event Horizon. Uh, this came out way back in the day, 1997, so there will be some spoiler talk. <laughs> so sorry, guys. There will be some spoilers. Uh, but before we jump right into it, man, uh, where were you when you saw this movie? How long ago? Did you see it in theater or on video? I saw the trailer in theaters, and after the first few seconds, I was like, is this Alien 4? Because... <laughs> Resurrection, I, I think Resurrection came out the same year, but I don't think I was aware of it just yet. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Think this trailer came out a bit for, for earlier, and, and I was very intrigued. I was like, oh, it's the guy from Jurassic Park, and it's, you know, space horror, which I was really into. Even. I was a kid. That's why I'm doing yeah. that voice, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I couldn't yeah. see in theaters, but I saw it on VHS, like I did uh, many movies from the 90s, like, like yeah. Ravenous, and uh, yeah. it scared the shit out of me. I was way too young to see that movie. Especially this movie, like, yeah, it's pretty hardcore, even for genre veterans. I think. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and uh, man, you know, uh, similar to you, I saw the trailer in theater, and, and me and my buddy were like, "Yo, we gotta check this out, man." I can't leave. She won't let you. God help us. And uh, we actually did see this in theater. And we were not prepared or ready for what we were about to see. And I, 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 I'm not over-exaggerating. When we left the theater, we walked out of the doors. We stopped. We both slowly turned at each other, looked at each other. And we were both were like, <sighs> I mean, like, we had to take a breath, man. We were like, yo, that was fucking wild, dude. Like, we were not, we were not prepared at all. Uh, you you weren't that. dancing out of the theater because of the prodigy playing over the end credits i did like that shit man yeah uh, the, the soundtrack to this movie is phenomenal and we both own it correct yeah i mean I, well. I i i listen to it constantly like i've seen the movie a handful of times but i i've listened to the soundtrack over and over and over again throughout yeah. my most of my life dude i mean uh, you, you know i mean r.i.p the the legend michael kamen uh one of the greatest composers of all time he did a phenomenal soundtrack for this movie and he had a little bit of orbital mixed in there. And I, you know, rewatching this the other day, I had some fun. Like that, o the whole opening credits sequence is like dope, man. Like it's it gets you in the mood. It's like perfect. Uh, but yeah, let's 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 jump into Event Horizon, nineteen ninety seven. Uh, quick plot synopsis for those of you that have not seen it. Uh, it's about a rescue crew. Uh, investigates a spaceship that disappeared into a black hole and has now returned with someone or something new on board. Directed, I know this is shocking. This is <laughs> shocking, especially after rewatching this the other day. Still to this day, uh, I, I would never have guessed that this was directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. No. Yes, never. It's still, you know, after rewatching it, it still does not feel, cinematography wise, everything. Like, it still does not feel like a Paul W.S. Anderson movie. And, and you know, uh, a credit to the script, uh, credit to the filmmakers involved uh, with this film. And, I don't, I, you know, it, are we safe to say? I mean, everybody has their, their guilty pleasure film with, with Paul. Um, are we, are, are me and you safe to say that overall, this is probably his best movie? What do you think, Alex? What do you this think This is definitely that? his best movie. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a, a plethora of amazing cast members, uh, is here, man. We got Lawrence Fishburne as Miller, Sam Neill as Weir, Dr. Weir. I mean, we have Kathleen, uh, Quaylen as Peters, Jolie Richardson as Stark. Richard T. Jones as Cooper. I mean, just just Jason I Jason Isaac's son is in this as DJ. He's like the medic. And my introduction to one of my favorite actors now, Sean Pertwee. Yeah. 
Um, that's right. This is before Dog Soldiers and all that stuff, before I uh, became a big fan of this guy. Uh, but yeah, just, just a, an awesome group of uh, actors, very talented group of actors uh, in this movie. But man, this movie has a little bit of everything that makes it unique and great. And not just the suspense building, not just the horror, not just the, you know, a little bit of action there too. Uh, uh, you got some explosions, you got, you got your sci-fi, you got your ships and all that. But it, it, it really has a little bit of everything in terms of filmmaking as well, in terms of we have models, we're still using models. Uh, it's not fully, we're going, everything is CGI in this. We're using a little bit of, you know, a little bit of everything. And a lot of this movie still holds up. It still holds up. What do you think? No, great. Yeah, I definitely, uh, watching it again, you know, there's there's moments like uh, like the, the when the gateway opens, you've got the, the, the wall of black liquid. And, yeah. You know, that's obviously dated effects, but a lot of it, especially and obviously the practical stuff is like incredible and uh i think visually it all comes together so well it, it, you know some really interesting shots some really interesting yeah models and, and mixing yeah some and this, cg and practical and yeah yeah and this i believe the ship the, interiors. it's a full this was a full scale model right here correct like one one scale <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one scale. Yeah, While yeah. James Cameron's rebuilding the Titanic, they built the Event Horizon outside But yeah, a lot of the visuals do hold up. Uh, of course, you're going to get some dated stuff, but uh, overall, it's still fantastic uh, to watch. Uh, and you know, again, a great cast we have in this. And you know, we have Captain Miller here, played by our boy Morpheus. Uh, speaking of Morpheus, what do you what do you think, Alex? Do you think that this uh, role got him the gig as Morpheus in The Matrix? Do you think? You read my mind. I was wondering, you know, <laughs> before being captain of the Nebuchadnezzar, was his time on Lewis and Clark? <laughs> what yeah. Him? yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, uh, my fiance uh, kind of uh, walked by while I was watching it and she had seen the movie before, but she was just commenting like Lawrence Fishburne has a very authoritative, authoritative oh, yeah. voice mm -hmm. in this. I'm like, yeah, he's the captain of the ship. I mean, uh, I, I definitely think it had to have, it may, it might be a coincidence, but it had to have factored in because that quality definitely transfers with not just being the captain of the ship, but just, uh, just that character quality. Oh yeah. He's someone you listen to. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. We don't know. We don't know. But it's an interesting theory we both brought up here that this got him the gig uh, for Morpheus because he's the captain of the ship, you know, taking charge, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, Sam Neill kills it. Everybody kills it in this. Uh, have you seen Sam Neill play a lot of villains? Like now or at the time when I first saw the movie? When, uh, around this time. No, I hadn't. I hadn't seen, you know, his... Uh film and stuff i was just uh i mainly known him for jurassic park right and it was a good kind of he, i mean not only is the cast great the characters are great yes um, like every single member of this crew uh they're very well realized they all have very distinct personalities mm -hmm. um they're introduced in a very uh organic way you know a lot you know a lot of these movies especially sci-fi movies where they introduce a crew or a group of soldiers um, and they lack personality or they introduce them too many at a time and you can't really keep track. I, I felt like with this movie, you really do get to know everyone and yeah. everyone serves a purpose and it doesn't feel like as an audience member, you're struggling to keep up. It's like mm -hmm. you're in there, you're meeting the crew. It's kind of organic and it really yeah. works. And uh, I think that's super important for a movie like this. They're not just there to be killed off. Right, right, right. And yeah, you've nailed it. Like every single character, you get to know the personality, what makes them tick, you know, uh, especially um, uh, Isaac's character as the medic. He's very standoffish, you yeah. know, he's, he's, he's you know, yeah, but, and, you know, we got Pertwee as the pilot, you know, but, um, and of course we have, <laughs> we got our brother here uh, who who is the comic relief. And I'm, I'm curious, I mean, the line is, you know, he goes, you want something 
black and hot inside you or something like that. <laughs> he tells the girl, which is hilarious. Um, I'm sure that would be considered sexual harassment now. But I, I'm going with the fact that they got that kind of relationship. They got that kind of relationship, friendship. I'm going with that. All right. Yeah. Because you have to. Because she hit him back with some shit too. I think they got that kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because who he's saying it to is 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 one of my favorite characters, Stark. You know. I, oh I yeah. She yeah. she's great because she is she's very intelligent. She's very tough. Putting Sam Neill in that that arm lock there. You mm-hmm. know. Uh, she's. Uh, yeah. She's very capable and and kind of and 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 she you know throughout the whole film you know she's she she never does anything actually one of my favorite things about this movie that I don't know if people talk about enough is the fact that for once the the characters in a sci-fi horror movie are not stupid not doing anything stupid they're doing exactly what what I would do and they're saying the things that I would say in those situations they're very you know like um, my favorite part is when they're watching the footage of the old Oh, crew. my God. And yeah. as soon as it ends, Lawrence Fisher looks on and just says, we're leaving. You know? <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Not only are they planning on leaving, they're planning on getting to a safe distance and firing missiles until they yeah. destroy it. Yeah, yeah. And then they're leaving. <laughs> yeah, he's like, fuck this. He's like, we we are out. No, no, no. You saw you, Everybody saw that shit, right? No, no, we're out. Uh, but yeah, no, you you you've nailed it. And 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 if if they if it seems like they've done something out of the norm or or something that may be considered horror cliche idiotic, is is really because of the ship. Yeah, it's very understandable. Yeah. Like they're under yeah. the influence of the ship. They're, it's it's their deepest darkest fears are you know they're they're at the mercy of of, of those things you know like any yeah. any common person would be so it's totally understandable it's, yeah you know you have Weir uh dealing with the death of his wife you know you have yeah. the mother dealing with her you know the issues with her son everyone has these demons especially later when it's revealed uh you know fishburne had to leave uh, one of his men behind yeah. to die and you know it's the, the 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 ship because of where it's been which i feel is uh is i love that they didn't blatantly tell you where it went yeah you know you the, the easiest thing is to say hey it went to another dimension it just it just went to hell unfortunately yeah. fucked up the crew the original crew that was on the ship and now it's back you know yeah. um and now we have this new crew investigating but you really the sky's the limit and a lot of fans over the years have come up with so many other theories you know they they brought in some lovecraftian type of theories it's perfectly and set up for it yeah 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 for sure for sure uh so yeah so we have our team uh they they're you know dr weir created the ship and now that it's back uh he's bringing in this new crew they're not happy about it they're like hey man we were just on fucking leave you know what i'm saying like we don't want to be here what's going on uh now some fans have pointed out uh uh, the weir's explanation of uh, you want to explain that of how one you get from one point to the, the other point, like because they were saying that, uh, in their words, light speed doesn't exist, right? Like, there's it's not possible, like, or you the, can't the, go faster than light speed, right? Yeah, right. So, well, how he explained it, you want to explain how he did it? To sure, go, yeah. To, yeah. I think they also explain this in Interstellar because when that's, I saw that, that's I what like, I was gonna say. Fans <laughs> have brought up that Christopher Nolan fucking ripped off. <laughs> ideas from this movie yeah you know for interstellar so i just want to point that out but yeah go ahead and explain that to people that have not yeah he uh uh dr weir used a piece of paper uh, as an example as like if the piece of paper were space you know um and you want to get from one point to the other what the what the ship does the gravity the gravity drive or if it's called it bends space so he just folds the paper so that the two points exist in the same space there you and then go. he uses the pencil and just you just pass through and then space returns to normal. So that's kind of how it works. They create a black hole so that they just, mm-hmm. they essentially teleport. Right. Essentially. Right, right. But they bend time and space. It's, I mean, it's pretty abstract. I mean, it's simplified yeah. in the movie, but if you think about it, I mean, I know yeah. nothing about these things. And, you know, <laughs> I assume it's far more complicated than, right, right. Than but it's a, it's on. a sound idea. It's fun and it works. It's sci-fi. For yeah, it works for the film. But uh, did you get rewatching the movie? Did you get like a three D vibe 
<laughs> for um, not really, but now that you mention it, I guess this would have been a perfect movie to do 3D because, I mean, not it, just these shots of zero gravity CG objects floating about, but there's a lot of the camera work, you know, um, yeah. at times it's Raimi esque, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Things, you know, like pushing in, you know, really uh, aggressively or pulling out. And uh, I feel like uh, it could have been a cool 3D movie. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I never if thought it... of that. Interesting. Yeah, because a lot of things fly towards the camera. Yeah. Uh, and I was I always thought about that. It'd be horrifying in 3D action, I think. About it. Especially <laughs> the, the, the visions. The oh, my cow, God, dude. All that. All people, be, people be freaking the fuck out. So, obviously, they're, they're, they're searching the ship that now that it's back. And uh, not looking too good there. <laughs> they're, they're, they're finding some spots, and they're like, uh, what the fuck uh, actually happened here? What the hell happened? Um, but, but yeah, more exploring and just absolutely great visuals. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, for sure. Just phenomenal visuals. And then, you know, they, they, they uh, I love this shot here when the, one of the body, yeah. dead bodies floating around. As soon as they get gravity back on line. Uh, you know, it crashes and, and breaks like that, which was kind of cool. Uh, but uh, is this the visuals you were talking about? When it looked a little dated. Well, not this particular shot, oh, okay. but it's when it's when uh, I think his yeah, well, his name's right there. I was like, I think his name is Justin. Uh, he gets <laughs> pulled into the uh, the actual uh, black hole or black liquid. Right. Um, oh, gotcha, gotcha. When he gets yanked in, yeah. But yeah, you know, we're still exploring the ship, and he discovers um, the heart of the ship, the core of the ship. And man, the visuals for this thing is fucking phenomenal, dude. I'm, you don't see shit like this right now. No, actually, this it's interesting. <laughs> phenomenal. I actually think if if uh, for video game fans, if you ever played Silent Hill for the room, there is a part where there's like this giant device that that looks very similar to that. I, I, I'm I'm betting that it was an influence on it because you know Silent Hill is yeah. influenced by Jacob's Ladder and all sorts of movies. I'm sure Event right. Horizon, especially with the subject matter and the, and the yeah. hell visuals. It, it, but like, I just made me think of kind of you bringing up it possibly being a 3d movie that would have looked great in 3d actually. dude yeah just that spinning i mean very, the, de the design is just very just, hellraiser ish yes it's absolutely amazing design i mean look at that thing this whole room I mean, actually this is a set I mean, yeah it's 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 it it's fucking phenomenal it's phenomenal uh but yeah like you said he gets sucked in comes back out he is not the same person the dark yeah he is all fucked up and uh he actually tries to kill himself and this was an entertaining little little action set piece here where uh our, our, our captain miller had to uh kind of help save the day uh all for naught of course but uh another thing that was interesting was going back to your character your favorite is she your favorite character of the movie or one of i don't know if she's my favorite i mean that's the thing there's so many great characters it's hard to pick a favorite but she's definitely very memorable to me because, yeah, she's just this um, really competent, really strong character who's, who's yeah. this survivor, you know, this, mm -hmm. this force through the film. And uh, I, I uh, and she's got a pretty sexy accent, too. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, you know, she's actually one of the few characters that doesn't reveal her fears or hallucinations if there are any. Which is interesting. Right. Oh yeah, that's a good point. That is interesting. But I love but, yeah. how I love how in this particular scene, if I'm correct in in, in, in uh, timing this scene, is when she gives her theory about yes how the ship has like readings, like it's got like there's life form readings all over it, and that they're under the influence of the ship's defense mechan mm -hmm. uh, defense mechanism. Like yeah. This. Yeah. And you know, uh, it sounds crazy, mm -hmm. but. I feel like it's more realistic in that situation for her to come to that conclusion than to be like, well, I think I should just stay rational and, you know, uh, there's no possible way that the ship is alive. You know, I feel like she's just, right. look, this is this is the best explanation I could come up with. Yeah. yeah. I don't care how crazy it sounds. This is, you know, this is yeah. what I see happening. And it's like. And, yeah, yeah. and Miller, Miller doesn't necessarily dismiss it right away. No. Yeah, he thinks about it. He's like, hmm, interesting. But, I mean, as soon as we arrive here, Weir's already acting strange 
you know, and of course it, 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 it is a very good scene uh, with Stark because bringing up that theory because people are seeing fucked up shit. They don't want to admit it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're seeing weird shit. Yeah. It's, it's and, frustrating when characters yeah. take too long to, to, to catch on to what's going on, you know? Right. They're like right, we're adults. Right. We don't believe in ghosts and yeah. goblins and then people are dying left and right. But here they're like, <laughs> you know, they, uh, they're like, yeah. they're, they're right there with the audience. It's like, no, I, f- I think this is what's happening. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Another reason, but yeah, it's you're, likeable. but yeah, you're, you're, you're correct, and especially what Miller was like, are you telling me this ship is alive? You know, it's you know, no one's, no one wants to jump to the conclusion right away that oh yeah, that's what it is, yeah. until it's too late, man. You know, uh, that's the Steven Spielberg shot we got going there. Until, until it's too late, and then things get even more crazy. And and now we got it. We got it <laughs> again. I lo- I love this movie, man. We we got to talk about when they finally. I know you met you briefly mentioned it earlier, but we got to talk about the the surveillance footage. <laughs> they finally oh got God. it. They finally cleaned it up and got it to work to find out what the fuck happened to the previous crew on the ship. And dude, I mean, it is. Like <laughs> it's chaos, dude. <laughs> it is like nightmare fuel. I mean, I mean, look at this shit. Are you guys watching this right now? I mean, it is fucking insanity, bro. Like it is yeah. crazy, dude. <laughs> it is nightmare fuel. And of course, you know what you mentioned earlier. After that, they're like, "All right, we need to get the fuck out." Of here. <laughs> like natural reaction, right? Yeah. Like we we need to get we we it's time to go it's time to go uh, yeah. but just just fucking nuts man fucking yeah. nuts I, I did enjoy the uh, earlier sequence was it was it earlier or later when Isaac's was talking to uh, Miller and he was saying uh, he he um, what you call it um, translated what this motherfucker was saying. It was and, bef- it was before this, okay, because okay. Um, uh, because he 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 translates the the in hell part. Actually, right. To, 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 so it's comprehensible to people. I actually uh, they they do a really good job of peeling back the layers of what had happened. You know, it's not like they get there and they find out exactly what happened because then why would they stay? Right? They they hear it only through audio at first. And there's a bit of Latin spoken, and you know, uh, Jason Isaac's character translates it on the spot. He's like, "It sounds like save me, right?" Right. And then later, he's like, "I was wrong with the translations. It's save yourself." And mm-hmm. it gets worse. I yeah. love that. It's like it gets worse. Yeah. It's like save yourself from hell. From and then when hell. they watch the video, you see him speak those words. Right. Um, I think it's "liberate uh, tutte me ex feliz." Um, yeah, uh, he's holding his eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, my God. Just, Apparently, <laughs> apparently Paul W. S. Anderson like shot a lot of footage, and they used I think they used um, amputees and adult film actors for more realism and, and yeah. to be more gruesome. Right, right. And obviously, we're all just wanting to see that footage, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, we were lucky to get what we got uh, in this yeah. movie, but of course, fans have been wanting for years uh, an extended version or an unrated. Uh, but uh, you know. I know it's a never say never, but it's kind of not looking like it's going to come out. Uh, but you know, who, who knows, who knows, you know, but yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to admit it right here, man. I, I think, uh, I think the blood orgy was hot, you know, I'm just gonna... <laughs> different strokes for different folks. But yeah, it's, it's time to bounce. It, it's, it's time, it's time to go. Yeah. But at this point, uh, Dr. Weir is, is, is gone. He, his, he, dug his eyeballs out he's a slave to the ship and it uh, doesn't go well for uh isaac's character man oh my goodness <laughs> like man. it does not go well for dj here and you know and this is what i'm talking about i mean everyone you know with the new hellraiser movie which i thought was a very solid effort i thought it was a very solid reboot i thought it was good uh but i didn't think it was great but this is this is what i'm talking about everyone talking about how it ridiculously insanely gory the new hellraiser movie is event horizon says hold my beer <laughs> okay hold my beer and this is what and this is the 90s this is the 90s <clears throat> okay this is what we're talking about 
But things get crazy, man. People start dying left and right. Things start getting really exciting. This is a great shot with our two uh, badasses right here. And then just this motherfucker just shows up. <laughs> the makeup effects are so good, especially oh, in that I know. lighting. Oh, I, I know. Couldn't stop thinking about how great this looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys, hey, next, I know we just passed Halloween, but put it on your list for uh, Halloween watch for next year for sure. But I love the scene there. He goes, where we're going, we won't need eyes to see. Sorry, no. Dr. Emmett Brown. Right, um, right, 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 right. A demented version of that, right? I thought you were going to say next Halloween people should dress up as Dr. Weir in the third act. <laughs> That'd be, that would be amazing. That'd that would be, be awesome. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, things get even more insane and crazy in terms in terms of the the ship starts bleeding i mean yeah. there's blood everywhere uh for all you shining fans i'm sure you guys would enjoy this sequence i'm wondering alex what do you think um with all of this blood uh letting especially when the ship starts bleeding blood uh just for the fuck of it just to fuck with people do you think this scene right here is one of the reasons where they were like, all right, let, let's kind of cut down the blood orgy scene footage a little and the reveal of what hell looks like at the end with some of the characters because of we just have gallons of blood just streaming? Do you think it was like too over? For us, it's like this is Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, baby. Street Fighter in Bison Sun. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but do you think? I don't know. I so, I, so, I don't know. I mean, sometimes these the MPAA can become bitches and just cut just because. Oh, but the think of the children. <laughs> well, the, the thing about the gore is this is this led to me being this led to me having kind of like a sad movie watching experience for Paul W. Sanderson's later films because you know. Um, Mortal Kombat is is fun. Yeah. But it's not, it doesn't have, I mean, it has very little uh, violence f from the games. Like, you have some fatalities and then, you know, right. some, some cool, but like, for the most part, it's it's not like, you know, it's not, go the, it's not gory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, right. that was before Ben Horizon. You know, when, when I found out he was doing Resident Evil, I thought, oh, perfect. The guy who did Event Horizon. I was so excited. I was so yeah. excited. And, Yes, Resident Evil's rated R, but it's rated R because some crazy person thought it should be. Um, right. It, it was pretty tame. It was a very tame R. Um, right, right. And then Alien vs. Predator was PG, at least where I saw it. PG-13, yeah. Over here, yeah. It was okay. an R. Okay, in Canada it was PG. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Yeah. Because, um, <laughs> again, you go back to this movie, you see just how hard they're pushing the envelope. Yeah. Um, oh, man, it's... I got some images to show a little bit later, too. <laughs> but, uh... But, no, you're right. You know, I could see you kind of being disappointed with Resident Evil in a way. Even though, you know, a lot of people find that first film fun and for what it is. But in terms of this shit, yeah. not even close. Uh, not even close. But just amazing visuals. We're getting... Look at this shit. Are you guys looking at this shit? Just absolutely Lovecraftian horror, cosmic horror... This is what it's all about, dude. Yeah. And what what's anno what annoys me sometimes is I I, I feel uh, not I feel, but I, I've heard people say, I love ghost ship. I absolutely love and adore ghost ship, but I hate event horizon. I can't stand event horizon. Horror in space, oh, in the hell, and demons in space. Da, 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 da. But I love Ghost Ship. I'm like, really? Really? I love Ghost Ship too. It's a great short film. <laughs> but I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just saying. But I'm just saying, you have a you have a ship that's haunted. Yeah. In a way, you can look at Event Horizon as a haunted ship, but it's just just for the fact that it's in space. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't handle it. Even the almighty red letter media is like, oh, I can't. Oh, it's just Hellraiser in space. Eh. I'm like, you guys completely missed the point. You missed the point as much as I enjoy watching those guys once in a while. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, come on. 
come on now. <laughs> There's not that many movies out there where a ship goes through a black hole, goes to hell, and comes back. Okay, this is yeah, what this is so fucking good. unique. There yeah. is nothing like this. Okay, some imagery reminds you of The Shining a little bit. Okay, fine. Some imagery may may remind you of of Hellraiser a little bit. Fine, that's perfectly fine. But uh, this this the script is unique. You know, the movie's unique. There's been nothing like this since. Nothing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, let's get to the finale here. It, it's getting fucking nuts. And now, you know, we have this sequence here. Again, you want to explain what's going on really quickly here? I get the feeling that the, the finale is a result of some reshoots maybe. But uh, basically, uh, Miller, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character, he's, he's, you know, he's haunted by this crew member he left behind, uh, burnt. And he keeps seeing him, this guy on this human torch fella. And then he turns into Weir. <laughs> yeah. Like Weir gone full Hellraiser. Right. And they have a they have a bit of a scuffle. They have a bit yeah. of fisticuffs. Yeah, we had a little bit of a fight there. You yeah. Know? The way the way uh uh Miller was fighting and hitting uh Weir, he was like the way he was saying words as he was hitting. Yeah. It was reminding me of Captain Kirk from Star Trek three, you know, <laughs> he's like, I have had enough of yeah. you. You know, it was gonna remind me of that. I don't know if Philip did that on purpose when he wrote the script just for fun. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. Hey, you know us. We love us some, some action. So we got a little bit of action there. Yeah. Um, but dude, I mean, but yeah, this was uh, his nightmare come alive. It was the guy he left behind that Captain Miller was talking about earlier that morphs into Weir. And I want you guys to look at this shot right here. Everybody watching. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> look at this shot. This is horror. This is horror. Are you fucking kidding me with your fucking ghost ship? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck ghost ship. All right, seriously. Everybody knows the best part of ghost ship is the first five minutes, and that's it. All right, but look at this shit. Fuck Hellraiser reboot. Fuck that. This is, this is where it's at. This is the 90s. No holds barred. But right here, he, he he's showing, uh, he's torturing Miller here. He's he's like, there's no escape. There, there's nothing you can do. Give in to it. And he gives him glimpses and visions of what's happening uh, to his crew that are already dead or what could happen to his, to the crew that aren't dead yet. And yeah. again, just more nightmare fuel here. And I mean, look at, I mean, look at this crazy shit, man. Like. Look at all this shit, dude. I mean, they had to speed it up really quickly. Uh, yeah, you only because, get glimpses, but... It, yeah, it, but, it, dude, it's fucking nuts. It gets fucking the job done. Ghost ship. the <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. You know? And, 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 of course, you know, me and my buddies, when we got this on DVD, you know, we had to freeze frame a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. Especially, especially during the blood orgy sequence, because we want to learn, you know, filmmaking process. We want to learn, you know? That's one of the reasons why we yeah. freeze frame some of that. But, uh, but yeah, especially with this crazy, insane, fucking nuts shit, yeah, uh, shit. we freeze framed a few images. And look at this shit, dude. It's almost beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. almost beautiful. You know, I mean, and this next shot, and this is what I'm talking about Event Horizon telling the new Hellraiser to hold my beer and fucking ghost ship. Look at this one still. Woo! Are you fucking kidding me right now? That's stark in the middle too. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me right now? This is this is the nightmare fuel. This is horror. This is amazing practical and, and makeup effects. Uh, this is the shit you don't want to dream about when you go to bed at night. Fucking ghost shit. This is this is like a deep <laughs> deep cut, but th that that image reminds me of. I don't know if it was the late '90s or early 2000s, but Todd McFarlane made these action figures based oh, on yeah. Clive Barker called Torture Souls. Yes, I remember those. Yeah, they were sick. They're they are actually beautiful pieces of art, but they're pretty yeah. much like that, just like insane, insane yeah. imagery. And uh, yeah. that's the thing is like this movie really is unique for all the reasons we stated, but also just um, when it comes to movies about hell or involving hell, which are some of my favorites. Yeah, they 
they really went for it in a way a lot of movies just they, they just come up short you know mm-hmm. and this is what mm-hmm. they toned this down you know like we don't, we want more but i still feel satisfied after seeing this even if we get short glimpses it it, it, it gets the job done it has that effect and it really yeah it it, it, uh, it stays with you it's it's gnarly stuff and if you want you could just go back and freeze frame it like me <laughs> yeah i remember just... i remember a lot of those freeze framed uh uh, things, you know, moments. Yeah, I remember a lot of those shots were actually on the cover of Fangoria magazines during yes. that time. Yeah, because everyone was really excited and pumped. They were like, "Dude, are you guys seeing this shit?" But yeah, uh, Miller's Miller's not going out like no punk. He's like, "I see," and he detonates the ship, blows it up, and uh, the 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 pod part of the ship that escapes uh, are two. We have two. Of the remaining crew left and they get picked up and rescue uh, they get picked up by a rescue team and i love how uh the door the camera slowly pans backwards and the doors of the ship slowly close shut and while that's happening uh we have our boy telling stark uh, don't worry we're safe everything's fine everything's fine we're safe and the doors close shut into darkness and then credits yeah and then prodigy baby (laughs) but what yeah this is uh it gets you pumped it's it's fucking fantastic uh i know uh, in terms of, of nitpicking a lot of people thought that this character was maybe a little bit too much especially in the third act of him being kind of the comedic relief I thought yeah. that was just, I thought, I, I get that a little bit, but I kind of thought that was just his personality. Uh, what did you think? I mean, I feel like his personality is pretty consistent. So, you know, I, I didn't have an issue with it. I feel like, you know, in the late 90s, you know, it, it kind of, it fit like that kind of character. I think looking right. at it now, yeah, it might, it might, it might feel a lot of place. It might feel a little weird, but um Watching it again, I, I did I did enjoy him because you know I, I, there's a real person there. He's not just he's not just the the jokes he cracks. You know he he cares about his crew members. Yeah. Um, he respects you know contrary to what it may seem like he respects his crew members. That's the other thing is like there is a relationship between the characters that um, that is there and yeah and and, and it really uh, strengthens this yeah. movie that. Um, you feel like they've known each other. You mm-hmm. feel like they've been through some shit together. Oh yeah, oh, and yeah. Uh, they're they pull their weight. You know, they're, yep. they they have each other's backs, and it's it's tragic when one by one they're just getting taken out. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like because we we focus on the gore, we focus on the visuals, but really uh, the characters uh, really strong in this. Uh, yes, because because this is a very typical setup, right? You have like you've got. A handful of people and most of them are going to die um, right but it was, it's especially important in this movie where it's about what's inside what's in your head you know mm-hmm. trauma yeah. and dark yeah. deep fears dealing uh, with your past demons yeah and having those demons come to haunt you yeah you know yeah so i had a question about miller <laughs> so at the end he's detonating the bridge the right middle portion of the ship to separate where he is Mm-hmm. The heart of the ship, and also, and 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 separating that from the pod where the, his crew escapes. Right. And you see the bridge explode, and then you see uh because the portal's opening. It's like we're going back to hell. You want to see what, what it looks like? We're going, and then yeah. it kind of gets sucked into a hole. So, did Miller go to hell? Because he didn't. He didn't blow up. He only separated the the, the two parts of the ship. He didn't like. They didn't blow up. Sequel. Sequel. No, I can't. <laughs> No, because that's um, a really that's dark an interesting kind of theory. Portion. Yeah, because you don't see again like their portion of the ship didn't blow up. I right. think the point was to separate his crew so they don't get pulled into the portal as well. So it's just right. him and Weir that ended yeah. up the. That's a he could that's be the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, I know. Yeah, I mean, he Jesus. could be. I know, right? And yeah, another thing I forgot to bring up here when when the movie's ending. Uh, one of the rescue crew members, he keeps yelling for, for help. Like he's saying backup, you know, you guys, you guys gonna like, no one, no one's answering him. He keeps, he keeps talking over and over and over and over again. You notice uh, that 
and no one answers him. You know, the ship they came from. So yeah, they're they're fucked. I'm going with the theory that any part of the ship, you're fucked. That Even makes, yeah, seven. that makes sense. It's like it's still a part of the ship, and I think that's yeah. that's done on purpose. Where it's like, oh, yeah. they got away, but there's still that chance because <laughs> mm-hmm, it's technically mm-hmm. it's still part of the ship, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, beautifully haunting, uh, nightmarish. Great cast, great visuals, amazing soundtrack. Uh, this film should have did a lot better uh, when it came yeah. out. Nobody was ready, even in the '90s. Nobody was ready, but. Now, you know, thankfully, you know, badasses like us and all of you guys that are fans of the film that are watching right now, uh, the cult following has grown. A lot of more people now are, uh, uh, I just, when I I watched the trailer recently and in the comments, hundreds of comments of people like, dude, this movie was great. Why aren't people talking about this? Oh, I love this movie now, you know. Um, A lot of, a lot of the love uh, has, has grown and. You know, we have all these releases now, uh, these special Blu-ray releases from, collect, you know, collector's edition releases from Shout Factory, Scream Factory. We got Steelbooks. And, you know, Samurai Guy, I have to see this gloriously horrific, hauntingly beautiful movie in 4K. Uh, at some point, I'll be getting the 4K for sure. So, uh, phenomenal film. Hey, if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Uh, for sure. Even if we spoil it, still go watch it. It is very unique, and uh, there's been nothing like it since. Alex, anything else before we wrap it up there for today? No, I think we've gushed enough about this movie. It's really, uh, <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. It, it's yeah. you know what? I changed my mind on the whole movie. <laughs> Fuck this movie. It's garbage. It's just Hellraiser in space. It's trash. I, I mean, uh, you know, it's 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 so it's so unique. Not just Su- Supernova's <laughs> better. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! That's I saw like that. Perfect... In, I saw that in theater too, and it oh, was man. fucking atrocious. But yeah. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Samurai guys got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's okay if you like go ship or supernova. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not okay. That's okay. Not okay. All right, but uh, that's it. Uh, hey, you know what to do. In the description box below, there will be a link there where you can follow the badass himself, Alex Chung, baby. Throwing them spinning wheel kicks, baby. That's right. Representing. Got to support people that love action, martial arts, and horror because that's what this channel is all about. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you guys honestly think of Event Horizon. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Our favorite motherfucking movies. All right, guys, take care.